of as lingers as a ghost in the past of the man who tonight hopes to uphold boxing's most storied territorial tradition. Well, the Philadelphia Fighters, the biggest fighters that has a lot of heart, a lot of desire to come to fight every minute of every round. There are many ways to define what is known as a Philadelphia fighter. Burt Cooper, tough but erratic, is one. As a late substitute, he nearly knocked out heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield. Marvin Hagler would give you other definitions. Willie Monroe and Boogaloo Watts, the only fighters he lost to until the end of his career. The roots of the feared Philadelphia fighter, especially those not nationally known, goes back to the 30s. And the mystique of the Philadelphia fighter and nobody wanting to fight him really began back in the days when many, most of the good Philadelphia fighters were black. The way I understood it, uh, a lot of them didn't want to fight me because they, you know, I guess they thought I was too good. Georgie Benton, who today trains three world champions, Pernell Whitaker, Meldrick Taylor, and Evander Holyfield, was one of those feared Philadelphia fighters. A link to the way past. Way back in the days when uh, Jack Johnson was champion, where did he come? He came to Philadelphia. He hung on these corners in Philadelphia. He hang around Poplar Street, 13th and Poplar, 12th and Poplar. He walked up and down those streets because this was the mecca of boxing. And all the great fighters that, you know, thought anything of themselves, this is where they came. In recent decades, there were many non-Philadelphians who went to Philadelphia to learn or to refine their craft. In the old days, even the non pareil Sugar Ray Robinson, went to Philadelphia to fight and to train. He used to bring big-time fighters with him as sparring partners, and they were all top fighters. And all of them used to say, damn, <laughs> this damn Philadelphia is a tough town. The Philadelphia fighter can also be defined by style. Pure boxers like Benton and Harold Johnson. And brawlers like Joe Frazier and light heavyweight champion Matthew Saad Mohammed, and lightweight champion Bob Montgomery. I was fighter walking, give a punch to take a punch. But I didn't, I, didn't get, I didn't get punchy. There were the puncher boxers like middleweight champion Joey Giardello, and bantamweight champion Jeff Chandler, and a recent heavyweight champion Tim Witherspoon. But there was another category as well. When people think of Philadelphia fighters, uh, rightly or wrongly, they think of guys who just never quite made it. Georgie Benton never quite made it to the middleweight championship, although he beat a middleweight champion, Joey Giardello. There were many others who were simply beaten by the streets. Others were eliminated in Philadelphia's famous gym wars. These were wars of survival to determine who would make it, finally, into the big big time. By the time they get finished and get ready to fight, they're all beat up. You know, some of them can't, some of them have to postpone the fight because they got a cut on their eye or they got their lip busted or they hurt their hand, you know, on account of them uh, gym wars, you know, which is stupid to me. There was a lot of good gym fighters that, that never made it in the ring, really. They were great, great gym fighters. There are fewer gyms and fighters in Philadelphia today as elsewhere. Meldrick Taylor is the only Philadelphia champion, a worthy carrier of the banner, Philadelphia fighter. Anytime you're fighting a Philadelphia fighter, you gotta be right, because you don't know what you're gonna come up against. What Meldrick Taylor comes up against tonight is Glenwood Brown. Hard punching challenger for his WBA welterweight championship. When was the last championship fight here in Philadelphia? You gotta go all the way back to August of 1982. Dwight Braxton defending his WBC light heavyweight title against Matthew Saad Muhammad of Philadelphia. The second fight between the two, a sixth round TKO for Braxton. And now for more on this little piece of history, we go back to our boxing analyst, another Philadelphia boxing product, Larry Merchant. Here are a couple of stories to illustrate just what the boxing culture of Philadelphia is that Meldrick Taylor represents. Many Philadelphia champions, but if anyone can overcome the odds, it's him. 
He has overcome big odds before. The biggest odds, in fact. What is it about a boxer's training camp that makes you believe a fighter can win? Is it the single-minded pursuit of a goal? Or is it, in this case, a sense of destiny? There's something about Glenwood that very seriously would indicate that <clears> there's <throat> a divine providence watching him because he was a dead man for 15 minutes at the bottom of a lake when he was a child of 14 and miraculously survived that experience. I could see myself dying. I mean, I seen life just going away from me. People say they could dream about death, but see, nobody experienced death like I experienced it. I mean, our experience did happen, so a lot of times I dream about it. And when I dream about it, sometimes I wake up like 4 o'clock in the morning in a real cold sweat, crying, because I seen my life just going. When I almost drowned, I think that, uh, you know, somebody upstairs was on my side and said, let's give this young man another chance in life. The idea always cool, no matter how hard you get hit. Oh, uh, the noise of the crowd when he got them saying, you fight, you fight. Coolness, coolness, so you can think what you do. On October 4 of this past year, Glenwood Brown fought Maurice Blocker for the IBF welterweight championship before a hometown crowd. He lost his concentration and the split decision. I know I lost that fight. I mean, I know my mind wasn't on, my mind was on the fight, but it was on saying the crowd, trying to impress the crowd. I always remember thinking, nice and cool. Coolness is what gives you the thinking, you know, that you'll be able to think what you're doing. You move too fast, and you get excited. You cannot think, and you cannot throw proper points. Get yourself nice and calm. For this fight, Glenwood Brown's camp is working at keeping him focused in the ring I said. and relaxed outside of it. I really love drawing, and I mean, this is something that, uh, Sometimes I just sit in my room when I don't have nothing to do and draw. I mean, it just keep my mind on a smooth level. Does that count? fight with Meldrick Taylor, you're going to see a different Glenwood Brown. You're going to see that gray area between his ears in command of the situation and not his emotions and his feelings. On my run every morning, I see Meldrick Taylor coming right to me, trying to throw his hand speed and just getting back out. Throw hand speed, getting back out. And so Glenwood Brown prepares for his second chance at the title, an opportunity he believes is his destiny. I was meant to be a welterweight championship as well. And my opportunity is January 18th. That night, I will become the welterweight, WBA welterweight champion in the world. What is it about a boxer's training camp that makes you believe this fighter can win? So Glenwood Brown's opportunity begins here and now. Hey man, just spin it right in there, don't worry about it. Be sharp, change your angle. Give him that hey, hey, come on. That snappy punch. So you saw the copy. 